Right, so, uh, I've only just now today realised or worked out <coughs> how to actually use uh, the Behringer X-Touch Universal Control Surface for the original purpose that I purchased it for about a year ago. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I'm, I'm not exactly a fast learner. But I always knew that it should be possible to um, control uh, plugins in a DAW uh, using the controller. But I'd never really, there's nothing quite, it's, it's not intuitive how it is that you're supposed to do it. But it turns out, once you know how to do it, it's actually quite straightforward. The instructions from uh, Behringer are not very good at all. Uh, and I'm a little cramped for space trying to film this here because I've got other stuff around me as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll plow ahead. I'm not going to do obviously an exhaustive tutorial on how to use this thing because I've, I've only just figured out how to use what it's actually for myself today. So uh, I thought I would pass on that tip in case there's anybody else out there that's a little bit disappointed with the instruction manual that comes with this thing. Um, so let's plow into it. So what I've, what I've got here um, in the actual kind of door is 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 a you know a fairly straightforward sort of mix or, or like a tracking session if you like where this channel here has got um gain control on it uh, an insert of the um the ssl plugin uh with some you know eq on there that's for electric guitar and there's a kind of a rudimentary guitar track that i've just kind of quickly recorded here and obviously you know you've got the jog wheel does all the usual stuff uh it's difficult to film this but uh yeah it's fairly you know just a thrown together guitar thing just to demonstrate what it is that i'm actually doing here so these tracks on the door uh there's a guitar coming in from the strymon iridium there um which goes into the focus right which goes into the door and then obviously the Mac, uh, the, 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 the X touch is the Mackie control surface. So that's this channel coming in here and then it's sending on bus three to some guitar effects. Um, and then there's also um, the, uh, the console valve plugin, the stock plugin from Logic on the stereo out mix. So the thing that was throwing me and confusing me this whole time about how to actually use this thing was how to switch between each individual plugin on a particular channel. Um, you know, these, um, when you've got more than one kind of insert on the, on the channel, how, how to switch between that on the control surface itself and adjust the parameters using the controls at the top of the, the actual control surface and it turns out it's actually as easy as this so here we go right so i'm going to choose let me just sort the tripod out here a second i'm going to choose uh this first channel right so this is um this is the guitar coming in and that's that's that on there this is that first channel selected right so you can see the selection changing on the screen as you choose the different selections there's that channel now intuitively what you would think is when you're in the global view, you can see the scribble strips along the top there. They show you the name of the you know, the channel that you've assigned in the door on the scribble strip. And there's no intuitive way of choosing the different plugins that are on that strip. You've just got to know. And it's this. So you, you, let's, we selected the Strymon Iridium stereo input channel. And you can see there that it's got a gate again and an SSL EQ and then obviously the bus send as well. So how do you how do you use the control surface to do that? Well, with that channel selected, you say plug in, and you can see the different plugins that are on there on these three strips here, and then you actually press the fader itself. And that brings up the plugin that you that you're gonna modify. 
and then the controls for the different you know the different controls on the plugin itself you scroll to them with the left and right arrow keys and you can see that that changes the scribble strips when you hit left and right you might not be able to see on camera there but it changes the name of the scribble st strips that are, you know, according to the different parameters in the actual plugin itself and to go if you, if you choose up and down on the uh, the control surface it switches between the different plugins that are assigned to that channel and then the corresponding settings for those plugins are displayed on the scribble strips at the top of the Behringer X-Touch controller. Now it seems obvious when you say it like that, but I've owned this unit now for about a year and I've literally just figured out how to do that. <laughs> and so you can see here on, on the plugin itself, this first fader here is assigned to the EQ um, in. And so if you change that fader on there, it affects the turning on and off of the EQ. Similarly, the next fader along uh, is assigned to dynamic pre-Q on and off. That changes that on and off on the plugin. Similarly, if you wanted to go to a different setting, you can probably see on the scribble strips there, when you press the left and right button, the final two scribble stri strips say page three of three, page two of three, page one of three, and that goes through the different settings that are available on the uh, the actual plugin it's, that's currently on the screen itself. So there, this one here, for example, is assigned to the um, the well, well, whether or not there's phase on and off is on that one there. So you turn that, and it sure enough, it it flips the phase of the input um, for you know if you're using figure of eight microphones and you're doing mid side and or whatever. You, Similarly, the high Q frequency there is assigned to that fader, and you can see when you turn that, it affects the uh, the high the the cut off frequency of the high Q. So every single button which is on your plugins on the screen, depending on which one you've got selected, automatically opens up the settings in the scribble strips um, when you switch to that plugin using the up and down selector on the X-Touch. So one more time, there's the, there's the hysteresis cut off. There's the threshold. And of course, the wonderful thing about it is that if we play this uh, currently, Everything that's going on all you gotta do is enable touch and then anything you do in the plugin is recorded to an automation track using the X touch controller properly. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed as to how long it's taken me to uh, figure it out, but um, there we go. Hopefully it wasn't too badly filmed and you can figure out for yourself what's going on here. And obviously the other great thing as well is that, you know, it's not just one channel at a time. If you go back to the global view <clears throat> and then you're able to, uh, you know, choose the next channel and so on. Let's turn touch off on there. Don't know about to read. Uh, you know, choose another fader. Select that one there, for example. This is the bus that's got the um, the the Model D Morg plugged into it. Um, you know, there's there's uh, two bus sends on there. Choose that, and then the sends over here actually on control surface they bring up on there there's bus one there's bus three choose that one you can choose which one is which and there are the sends and you get the idea so there's send one to bus 
uh, sure enough it changes it on the screen up there as well so uh, yeah sorry for being thick but hopefully other people who have been a bit mixed up by that will be uh, able to make a bit more sense of it now it's literally just a case of choosing the channel that you want to affect go back to global view And then the scribble strips display the parameters that you can affect on that particular channel. <laughs> 